This is the second video in our five part series on the ethical, moral and cultural opportunities and risks of digital technology. In this video, we take a deeper look at artificial intelligence and the environmental effects of computer technology. So there's a lot of hype and excitement around the emerging technologies of artificial intelligence and machine learning and what they could mean for the future of robotics. However, there's a lot of confusion surrounding these terms because they're often used interchangeably. So what does each term mean and how do they relate to each other? Well, John McCarthy is actually the American computer scientist who first coined the term artificial intelligence in 1956. And he said, for the present purpose, the artificial intelligence problem is taken to be that of making a machine behave in ways that would be called intelligent if a human were so behaving. It's a broad term that describes any machine programmed to think, work or react like a human. Now, in most cases, AI can be broken down into two main categories. We have applied, weak, or what's known as narrow AI. And this is AI that's designed to manage a very specific task. And this is the most common form of AI. For example, playing a game of chess or image recognition. Generalized AI is when AI can evolve and improve to handle other tasks. Emerging and developing areas of AI, and it's closely linked to what's known as machine learning. So as we just mentioned it, what do we mean by machine learning? Well, this is a term that was coined by Arthur Samuel in 1959, and he says it's the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So machine learning is a subset of AI. In other words, it's one way to achieve artificial intelligence. It is, in essence, the science of training a device or application to perform a task and then improve its own capabilities. It's generally achieved by feeding it data and information and scenarios so it can learn and evolve over time. And finally, we come to the term robotics, which often gets thrown in and associated around AI, but not all robots are smart. So what is a robot? It's just a machine that carries out work by itself by following a set of programmed rules. Robots can fall broadly into two categories. We have what are known as dumb robots. They simply repeat the same task over and over. No AI is involved here. You can think of the robots in a car assembly line. And then we have what are called smart robots, trained to learn, adapt, and carry out progressively more complex tasks as they evolve. This, for example, is a robot designed to beat a human at chess. So now we've really understood these different terms, what are some examples of artificial intelligence in action today? We've got a few on the screen, self-driving cars, predicting when to trade stocks and shares, suggesting products a user might want to purchase online shopping, adapting revision content based on a student's prior success or failure, and alerting an operator about fixes and errors in manufacturing. So there are clearly some ethical, moral and cultural implications of artificial intelligence. And these are some areas you might like to consider when considering AI. Who's accountable? What's the safety put in place? Is there any legal liability and who should be held responsible if an AI performs an unwanted action? And do AI algorithms have any algorithmic bias? And we'll explain what we mean by that in a minute. So let's look at these four areas through the lens of intelligent self-driving automated cars. So here we have a scenario. A self-driving car is traveling at the speed limit when suddenly, without warning, a single person runs out into its path. The car has calculated there's not enough safe stopping distance. So if it continues on its current course, it will hit the person. If the car turns either left or right, it will avoid the person, but will crash into a wall on either side, likely harming the passenger inside. What should the automatic intelligent AI of this self-driving car 
do in this situation? This is a great exercise in ethical and moral thinking, and there is no easy answer. However, there are organisations out there having to make such decisions and translate these choices into the algorithms that control self-driving cars. There are two facts to consider as we look into the future of self-driving cars. One, the AI algorithms behind the self-driving cars will massively reduce the number of road traffic related deaths. Two, the AI algorithms behind self-driving cars will end up causing unavoidable deaths at some point. It's important for us to look at the choices AI and machine learning algorithms are making and consider the four areas we mentioned earlier, accountability, safety, algorithmic bias and legal liability. So what do we mean by algorithmic bias? Well, this is when we're designing an algorithm and it prioritizes either on purpose or by accident certain outputs over others or favors one group of users over another. For example, should it take into consideration age when assessing potential collisions? Safety. How can we ensure safety with the implementation of an algorithm that can choose, learn and adapt? What rules should be programmed to make sure it does no harm? What should it do when harm is unavoidable? Accountability. So the choices the AI makes will have consequences. Now, who should be held accountable for the actions carried out by an AI? And this leads us on nicely to legal liability. In the case of injury or loss of life, who should be held legally responsible? Is it the person who purchased the car, the programmer, the manufacturer, the government? Well, there's no right or wrong answer here. Being able to understand some of these problems and some of the lenses which you could look at them will help you answer these sort of questions in the exam. So technology puts a huge demand on our environment and its natural resources, which are finite. So for an example, technology sold as of early 2020, at Nintendo DS 154 million, Xbox 165, Playstations 1 through 5 uh, 455 million, and over 1.7 billion smartphones and growing. The issue is made worse by the fact we see many technological devices as disposable replacing items like games consoles and mobile phones every few years. The average desktop computer as a comparison takes around nine times its weight in fossil fuels to produce, whereas something like a refrigerator is about the same. This is incredibly wasteful. On top of this, we're storing growing amounts of our data online in huge cloud data centers. So 2% of our global energy consumption is currently used by data centers that do nothing more than store our digital information. That's roughly 210 terawatts of electricity. Now a single terawatt is one trillion watts. Estimates suggest that the annual electricity usage of data centers could grow to as much as 8,000 terawatts by the year 2030. When we also consider consumer devices, networking and technology production, we can see that a fifth of energy used in 2023 is predicted to be taken up by information and communications technology. That's a phenomenal 40,000 terawatts of electricity. So here's another fact that many people don't realize. Computers contain toxic components. Uh, cadmium, for example, is commonly found in chip resistors and semiconductors. Mercury and chromium can be found in circuit boards, switches and relays. Old computing equipment is often shipped to countries with lower standards for disposal. Here we see people sifting through old computer parts to salvage raw materials, which expose them to dangerous chemicals. Natural resource management, any consumption and technological disposal are all environmental concerns with serious 
ethical, moral and cultural implications. Technology may be convenient, but there are wider costs that many of us don't think about day to day. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What do we mean by artificial intelligence and what are some of the moral and ethical considerations of its use? And what are some of the ethical, moral and cultural environmental issues and impacts relating to technology? So before you end this video, just pop your pen down and check out this little. So keeping up with technological developments is something which 